I will be your host for this evening. I am Marwan Cameron. I am the executive director of Gather Together, Grow Together. I run the Conduit podcast. And also, this is being brought to you by the League of Black Male Voters, which is a new 501c4 uh, being established here in Kitsap County. Marwan Cameron hosted a debate in Bremerton with three candidates for a House seat in the state legislature representing District 23. All three candidates are Democrats. After their opening statements, Mr. Cameron asked the candidates for their stance on legislation that would create a Washington State Commission on Boys and Men. Each candidate, Bren Felix, Greg Nance, and John Gibbons, expressed support for the idea. Listen to their responses. Uh, and so the first question, and we will actually go in order, so we'll start with Bren and then Greg and then John. In 2025, Senator John Lovick will reintroduce his legislation to create a state commission on boys and men to focus on those areas where we see boys and men in particular are struggling. Things like educational achievement, certain aspects of physical and mental health, suicides, homelessness, deaths from drugs and alcohol, incarceration, underrepresentation in certain occupations. Senator Lovett describes the creation of a state commission on boys and men uh, being consistent with our state's commitments to equity and inclusion. Do you think that having some focus on boys and men's well-being is consistent with the values of equity and inclusion? And could you see yourself supporting legislation that would create a state commission on boys and men? Brent? Thank you. Um, and I appreciate that. I was not aware of Senator Lovett's bill, um, and I'm really excited to support it. This is exactly why I'm running, to build our infrastructure of opportunity for people who have for too long been left behind for our systems who are leaving behind our most at-risk youth, black men, our BIPOC population, and communities that traditionally have been underrepresented and frankly excluded from our systems of government. Um, absolutely, when it comes to education achievement, supporting programs that make sure that we are bridging you know, what has been called the achievement gap, stopping our school to prison pipeline, mental health and suicide, I work with Flint and Peninsula Community Health to make sure that we have investments in our school-based health systems so that, because we know school is a place where youth in particular access many of these services. Um, and incarceration, you know, count me in, this is where I cut my teeth in civil rights advocacy and criminal justice, absolutely. We need to be, again, stopping the school to prison pipeline. We need to eliminate juvenile life without parole. We need to stop juvenile offenses being included in three strikes, I mean, I could go on. Um, I disagree with some of the rollback of our state Supreme Court's juvenile justice prudent, uh, jurisprudence uh, and very much plan to uh, reach out to Senator Lovick and ask him about it and ask him how I can be fully supportive. Thank you. Great. Yes, uh, Senator Lovick is a friend of mine. We've spoken about it. I plan to run a companion in the House of Representatives. This is vitally, vitally important. Um, I went to school here locally. I played baseball in Bremerton the backup left fielder just down the road. I also was a pretty strong student at Bainbridge High School, and yet inside I was struggling. I just lost my granddad, and I was dealing with mental health issues, depression, anxiety, and was dealing with uh, what became uh, an alcohol issue as well, substance abuse. Um, kids across our state are struggling, um, including kids that go to nice suburban high schools and schools that are not meeting standards and everywhere in between. We need to be there for young people. Senator Lovick has a big heart for this, as do I. I've spent my entire adult life fighting for our young people as a youth mentor. Uh, for 16 years, I've been the chairman of Money Think. We create opportunity for young people to take care of their holistic wellness, helping them to get into college and avoid student debt, helping them to take care of their mental health. We were honored by President Obama at the White House as a champion of change all the way back in 2012. I've been in this work half of my life now, my entire adult life, is a great idea. It's one that I'm proud to support with a companion in the house so that we can see this across the finish line and take care of every young person across this great state. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Joe. Thank you. Um, so again, I was not aware of this, uh, but I would definitely fully support a commission on boys and men. I think that um, too often that we have too many of our hate to get into gender, but I think men sometimes have a, a tendency to hold things back because they're supposed to be strong. And I think boys learn that also. I think it'd be very important to, for us to have uh, a look at how 
we can improve mental health in this area and take away some of the stigma that goes along with, with uh, seeking mental health um, counselors and, and therapy. Um, I've been working uh, at the Washington State Dental Association because this is something very important to me in creating a wellness program there that will look at this exact same thing. Um, we find that a lot of the professions, because of the stigma, won't seek treatment. And I think men and young men are the same, that they don't seek treatment because of that stigma. And I think that that needs to change. We need to have a society that understands that if we're seeking mental wellness, that we're actually doing the right thing, and that we're that we're um, that we're well, not that we have a problem. We saw this recently when an uh, airline pilot um, tried to take command of a train of an airplane, and he should have been seeing treatment instead. And those are the kind of the consequences we have when you don't have access to mental health care. All right. Thank you.